Hey. All right, what's up guys? My name is Kieran and this is the best of the web. So in the first story today, if you have any spirit at all, if you are not just a cold, deadless body with no emotions inside, you all know that the movie Up was literally probably one of the best movies of all time. I know it's meant to be a kid's film, but most people said about five minutes in they started crying. And the company who made the movie, Pixar, are owned by Disney. And Disney have this very strange reputation of being very clingy to their copyright. Disney forced a Florida daycare center to remove a Minnie Mouse mural because it was not authorized properly. And even better, they wouldn't allow a stonemason to carve the words Winnie the Pooh into a child's gravestone because it would breach their copyright. Now I don't know what kind of cartoon child snatcher villain you have to be to not let someone write something on a child's gravestone, but I'm guessing whoever enforced this ban probably eats bunnies and deers for breakfast. Instead of going to the gym, they just punch orphans in the face for hours on end. And at the end of their long hard day of earning millions of dollars, go home and drink widow tears. But of course I'm joking. I don't know the actual logistics of what happened with the kid's gravestone and all this other stuff. But getting to the main super duper awesome point, someone has recreated the home from Up in Utah. And amazingly, Disney are okay with it. For the one time, they're not letting any reproductions happen. But for now, this spark of a childhood dream is allowed to escape and live, instead of being crushed by the corporate boot. So there's something to make your day a little brighter. But moving on, recently we've all seen the events in Libya unfold and we've seen the rebels take over Gaddafi's compound. And so now I feel... Sorry, not quite sure what that was, but now I feel it is time to celebrate Gaddafi's greatest moments. But alas, the mirror has already done it for me, sneaky bastards. And there is a link below to the top 10 best Gaddafi moments. It really does sound like a cartoon name from Wacky Races, doesn't it? Which I guess is pretty fitting. But for the sake of not reading out really long lists, I will give you my three favourite. When travelling abroad, Gaddafi likes to take around 400 people, including 40 bodyguards who have to be female, and virgins. I have no idea why he would want them there, but I guess only time will tell. Two, trying to rid Libya of any Western influence, he decided to convert all English words into Arab equivalents, even brand names which usually aren't, such as 7up was turned into Sabah's Fork. I have no idea how to say that word. I think you need to do the thing, but I just can't. Sabah yeah, I just sound like something of Star Wars now. But number three, and my favourite all-time gaddafi moment, most uh, heads of states can pretty easily order the release of a prisoner. We saw the Scottish government release the El Magrahi person, Majiggy, and Gaddafi could do the same if he wanted to, but no, in the spirit of Gaddafi, in 1988, he decided to release 400 inmates by driving a bulldozer into a prison wall. And so I can only help but notice that Colonel Gaddafi is the evil twin brother of Jeremy Clarkson. Who else would do such a ridiculous thing? But in the final story of today, I might have just heard about the most badass person of all time. I introduce you to the man known as Poon Lim. First of all, he's got Poon in his name, which is just amazing to start off with. The real amazing thing is that he lasted 133 days alone on a raft in the Atlantic Ocean. He was off the south coast of China on a boat and it was during World War II, and his boat, which had 54 other people in, was shot by a Nazi U-boat, which is a submarine, I think. Now, Mr. Lim instinctively jumped off the boat into the freezing water, where he had to keep himself afloat just by swimming for two hours, so I would have died straight away in the first two hours. And at the end of these two hours, he saw a lifeboat which had sprung off the ship because the boiler had exploded so badly that everything was just flung into the ocean. Now, on his raft were a few supplies, like a flashlight, some water, and some biscuits and he allowed himself a few sips of water and a biscuit each morning to survive on. In order to keep himself fit, he swam twice a day with a loop connected to himself and his raft, and he had to keep watch out for sharks. After about a month, he ran out of supplies just from the raft, so he knew he needed to do something even more badass. Using his final little bits of biscuit as bait, he caught a fish, cut it open with the biscuit tin, ate it, but then used the last little bits as more bait for more fish. Even after catching several fish, he would not eat some of them and just lay them out to rot so that seagulls would come, which he could also catch and kill and eat. And the very best part of his survival story was when he saw a shark go past his raft. And instead of being like, oh shit, he was like, oh, I'm incredibly amazingly cool. And so he used a bit more fish to bait it, grabbed it on board with his bare hands and killed it with a jug. 
I'll of course link you to the story about him below and you should definitely go read it all, it is incredible what he did. And in honour of this amazing man, from now on I will not make any Chuck Norris jokes. It is Poon Lim. And I feel as if you should all do the same. But anyway guys, I know it's been a fairly long video today, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, of course, I'm going to plead you for thumbs up and you can subscribe on your own accord. But until next time, that is of course me, in my YouTube shirt. Out!